Good morning, Church. Good morning, Father. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Church, today I want to talk about how love pays the price. Jesus paid the price. Can we say those words together? Love, love pays, the pays the price. Jesus paid the price. In our second reading from the book of Hebrews, the writer of the book of Hebrews was narrating how in the time of Jesus, for more than 2,000 years since Moses decreed, that's our first reading today, the high priest, once a year, was the only one able to enter the sanctuary, or what they call the Holy of Holies. Once a year, after sacrificing goats and bulls, sprinkling their blood and ashes unto himself and the people outside of the sanctuary to make them clean so he could be worthy to enter the Holy of Holies as they worship God. I have a picture of this. See, this is the inner room of the Temple of Jerusalem. In that inner room, which is called the Holy of Holies, or sometimes called the Sanctuary. It is separated by a veil. See that veil over there? And across the veil, uh, you see that box over there? That is what you call the Ark of the Covenant. Huh? The Ark of the Covenant is the place uh, in which the two tablets of the Ten Commandments can be found. Remember, uh, those who have seen the Ten Commandments by, what's his name? Charlton, what's his name? Charlton, huh? Charlton Heston, yes, right. Remember, two tablets, the first tablet containing the first three commandments about God, and the second tablet containing the seven commandments about how we treat each other. So it's placed in that box over there, guarded by two. Uh, a statue of cherubims and once a year the high priest goes inside uh, that sanctuary enters the veil and offers incense huh? uh, all that changed in Jesus Christ the veil of the Holy of Holies that veil that you see over there were torn apart when Jesus died on the cross literally you can see this in the gospel of john but then there's a second picture that i want to show you so this is how the priest after slaughtering those animals would burn them that is what you call holocaust huh? and after burning them before burning them he would sprinkle himself and the people with the blood of the animals and after burning them the ashes will be sprinkled upon himself and the people look at this third picture look how for us Christians that lamb that slain is now Jesus the lamb of God he is the ultimate sacrifice. His blood on the cross enabled us to enter the Holy of Holies, that is the presence of our Heavenly Father, without any more animal sacrifices, not even what the writer called of the book of Hebrews, dead works. Did you hear those words from the second reading today? Dead works. What does that mean, Father Mario, those dead works? For the Apostle Paul and the early Christian writers, our good deeds, fasting, prayer, almsgiving, kindness towards others, etc., cannot earn us heaven. Only the blood of Jesus can. They only become living works when they come into the blood of the living Savior, Jesus Christ. My friends, we do not go to heaven because we are good. We go to heaven because God is good. 
Our goodness is not our works. Our goodness is Jesus Christ. And church, what is the good news today? The good news today, my friends, is this, that you and I can enter freely the heart of the Father in Jesus Christ. When I was a teenager, trying to please God because I wanted to enter the seminary, I assumed that the way to heaven were good deeds or good works. Today, survey after survey in the last 20 to 30 years, most Catholics today and non-Christians answered that the way to heaven is being good or doing lots of good. You know, they usually, uh, some of the street surveys are done like on State Street and Navy Pier here in the Chicagoland area. And the, the interviewer will say, uh, uh, do you think you, do you think you can go to heaven? And Catholics answer like this. Uh, oh, oh, I need to do more good works. I need to forgive my boss, to be kinder to my in-laws, or sort of things like that. They always imagined that God's mercy is like the justice scales of old, that the good deeds must outweigh the bad deeds. This, brothers and sisters, is the fundamental belief of Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, Judaism, and Islam. When I found this as a teenager, I had so many questions when I learned this. If we believe that good works will bring us to heaven, how are we radically different from the world religions around us? If our ticket to heaven is good works, how much good works do I need? And then I compared myself to the heroes of my faith when I was a teenager. I compared myself to Mother Teresa, John Paul II, the saintly martyrs. And you know how did I feel when I compared myself? <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm like a period. <laughs> or 100% of a period. <laughs> huh? Surely they can go to heaven not me i know i'm a sinner i struggle with so many things i question a lot of things but my friends we don't need to feel that way when you invite jesus christ in your life in faith when you ask him to forgive all of your sins because you are a human being and then this is the most difficult part when you put all your trust in Jesus Jesus is the only one you need he is the only one you need to go to heaven the only one you need to enter the very heart of the Heavenly Father and the only one that can bless and make your dead deeds into living deeds. In fact, this reality is what we call as Christians salvation. That I need somebody to save me. If I don't need anybody to save me, then I can just go to heaven straight with my good deeds. How much? I don't know. But I need somebody to save me. Because I know I can't. And if you are honest with yourself, you know you can't. You've tried. I need a savior. You need a savior. The other name for this is grace. 
amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. We celebrate this amazing grace every Sunday at the Eucharist. Because here, on that table, on that altar, Jesus offers himself once again in an unblooded way to the Father for our salvation, the forgiveness of our sins. No wonder the Mass is the first sacrament of mercy, not confession. The sacrament of reconciliation derives its power to forgive from the holy sacrifice of the Mass. My friend, love paid this price 2,000 years ago. Today, in hundreds of thousands of altars throughout the world, Jesus, love himself, the Lamb of God, will do it again for you. 2,000 years ago, he paid the price with his life, with his blood. In a few minutes, he would do so again on that altar. That's why we call this the holy sacrifice of the Mass. He will pray, he will pay the price of love once again by his sacrifice on the cross. So you and I can enter the very heart of the Heavenly Father. Praise God that we don't do it anymore by bulls, goats, lambs to sacrifice. Our living deed is Jesus, the Lamb of God. My friends, no wonder the only response to this great love is Eucharistia, thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we say those words? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Let's say this together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For paying the price of love for me. For paying the price of love for so me. So I can enter the heart of the Heavenly Father. So I can enter the heart of the Heavenly Father. Come into my heart again, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart again, Lord Jesus. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. I put all my trust in you. I put all my trust in you. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen.
The Gospel of the Lord. saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Oh, my God. 